So today, uh, I just wanted to show off some of my collection, which I've done this before in the past. Uh, I've done it with my VHS tapes and my DVDs, and I've even attempted to do some other videos similar to this, but have not panned out just because I'm not very good at talking, like improvising. Uh, but thankfully, this has a lot of stuff. I can talk about and uh, it also has a very cool story that I'd like to tell as well um, lots of stuff in my collection has it has cool stories uh, so for example this shelf that's holding these VHS tapes and CDs I bought that from a Goodwill and um, I had I don't know why I gave myself two options but it was either that shelf or uh, a Napa Valley cassette holder um, and I obviously chose that and because I chose that um, I ended up buying these cheap little Amazon cassette you know holders a couple years later that are hanging on from a thread but yeah everything in this uh, everything in my collection has some kind of story and um, I just like telling those stories and this one is one of those cases. So like last year, we were trying to find a stereo cabinet because I, I'll, I'll post a, a picture. Before I had this like a stereo uh, shelf cabinet thing and I had like my cassette player, CD player, all of that stuff. And, um, and it was cool, I liked it, but it was a lot of wires. And it was also very complicated because I had like the equalizer and like if I wanted to do one thing, I had to turn off another and then it was just for convenience to listen to music, especially since I don't listen to music very often. Um, it was confusing, you know, cause like I, I might forget like two months down the line and I don't need to, I don't want to write instructions on how to do things, but basically, the point I'm trying to say is that we did a lot of research and we wanted to try to find a stereo cabinet. And um, this is a stereo console, actually. And we looked through lots of options. And a lot of them, frankly, are really ugly. And we came across three. And I'll post some pictures of what each one looked like. Um, actually, I have them written down. So one option was this one, the Panasonic SE9000H. G, excuse me, um, a Zenith console, the MNT2670, a Grundig Stereogram KS780UWE radio, or the Grundig KS770. Um, those are our options. Three of them, or two of them, were stupid expensive, and the other one uh, just isn't too common and this one we were able to find One last little bit. I will add so what we're gonna be doing today. I, I want to show you around I'm gonna show you what's inside of this console and Then uh, I want to show you what I've done to it and like the the inner workings of it uh, But one last little thing little story um, So we found one and it was very, it was pretty well, you know, reasonably cheap. It was like 150, uh, cause it was in Michigan, I believe. And, um, it ended up selling before we were able to, uh, buy it. And I was like, oh, that sucks. So then I just, I kind of forgot about it. I held it off until November. Um, actually it was October. It was October 20th or October 30th, I think. And, um, I found one. And it was like 90 and it was, it was even cheaper and the one before the more expensive one that one didn't even have a record player so this one had a record player uh everything everything seemed to be working and it was only like 90 or, or like 100 bucks or something so i text i, I messaged this person on facebook he says um okay you're gonna meet up with this other person he's selling it for me we drive to a abandoned true value hardware store uh we went to the the back room of the hardware uh, to, of true value it was like just a mess i think the guy had it as like a storage unit or something because and so yeah that we picked it up from this old dinky little true value and we drove it home 
And the cool thing about this stereo is that it's from Vietnam. So the guy I gave the money to, not him, but the he was selling it for someone else. That person was a in the army during Vietnam, and um, this was shipped from Vietnam to the United States. And he even gave me um, these are special service uh, reel to reel tapes, just blanks. I don't know the actual story on them. There's no like JFK files or anything I, across country and then you could buy these so you can record music on your stereo or whatever. It's, um, they're pretty cool though. So I've only listened to like two and like they have like radio broadcasts and comedy shows. So yeah, that's the story of it. Uh, now I want to show you, you know, everything in it. Ignore the, uh, I have to clean that record mat. It's kind of gnarly. So. These are the features in the console. We have a record player. It has a 78, uh, a 78, 45, 33, and 16 speed on the player. And it's also got a record changer. Now, as a kid, I knew that if, uh, if it had this arm, uh, that meant that the record player was a record changer. And I always thought that was cool, but I was always confused on it because I never had a record player to really understand what this arm made, like what this arm did to make it a record changer. And I'll show you guys that later. But uh, yeah, this down there, we have a little knob for to choose between external and internal speakers or both if you choose. But yeah, these, uh, these two of these knobs, I actually had to service the uh, pots, the potentiometers, were pretty crusty, and cleaning it um, wasn't the easiest. Just taking them apart was a little more difficult, and I ended up breaking two of the, the uh, shafts. And uh, so the, the base and the volume have two brand new potentiometers, but the shaft was too short, so I bought, uh, I bought those extenders. That's what those are. All right, yeah, so we have the treble, we have bass, we have balance for the left and right speaker, uh, volume, and then this is our selector. We have uh, your AM, FM, um, your phonograph, your record player, uh, the stereo, the reel-to-reel, -reel, and then an aux. And I will etch I'm actually going to skip the aux. I'm going to move straight to the reel-to-reel, -reel, and then I'll come back to what the aux, what I've done to the aux. Nothing too crazy. It does thankfully have three speeds. Uh, the old reel-to-reel -reel I had was a very nice Sony, but I think it only had two speeds. Um, so you have one and seven eighth, three and three fourths, and seven and a half. Okay, you have your read head right there. And uh, this is where you load it for anybody that's not familiar with uh, reels. You load it through again. I, I want to. I'm going to demonstrate all of that. One of my requirements for finding a console, a stereo console, was um, it needed to have a reel-to-reel -reel and a record player, and then radio is usually kind of standard in these kind of things. Um, so I wasn't worried about that. <clears throat> and the reason I wanted that, and the reason I the those three stereo consoles I listed off earlier, all three of those have a record player and reel-to-reel -reel. and I wanted that because um, a lot of consoles only have a record player or like an 8-track player and then not enough room to have a reel-to-reel -reel as well like there's always a combination there's no one console that has multiple formats and I really wanted just an all-in-one machine and so what I did and the reason I was I chose this one in particular is because it had a space. Now this space, and I'll grab something to compare it. This is, I believe, just 12 inches, maybe a little bit longer, like 12 and a half. But this is where you choose, uh, this is where you fit your extra records, right? Or, or, or reel to reels. But this is a record slot, and you could fit probably like, you know, a dozen or so records in this slot. And I have too many records to really do anything with this, to, to put records in there, so that's kind of pointless on my part. And so I was, you know, using the, the big brain I have, I was like, what if I just put
put what I want in that slot for maybe a week I did a lot of searching and I found a realistic SCP-30 uh, SCP-30 now to find a I know there, there's Walkmans and I know there's um, like portable players but I wanted to look somewhat natural so trust me when I say that finding a short uh, it's called a bookshelf cassette player uh, to find something this small to fit in I think it's like five inches it's re it's really difficult and then keep in mind that I also had to make room for the 8-track player so it's not like I mean I could have just had one big cassette but that that wasn't the point I also wanted an 8-track so to find something this small along with enough space to have the 8-track it was very difficult um, so I found this, I think it was like 20 bucks, and I brought it home, and guess what? It didn't fit. Measured from here to here, and not the feet. So this fit, but not the little quarter inch that was here. So that wasn't a problem though, I just sanded it off, that fits. Uh, this is a, a track player, now they don't make them this small, um, like in terms of for stereo use. But what I did is I modified a car player and it, this is this is for a car right here and it's also realistic it doesn't say it on the front but on the top of it it's for a realistic I wanted these two to match just for I don't know why I just wanted to um, but I modified a car player it wasn't too difficult I just I think it was uh, either 9 volts or 12 volts oh, it's a car so 12 volts 12 volt line and then uh, the harness that was in the back was just connected some like you know RCA jacks call it a day and then obviously right here we have a little ch uh, switcher um, only two are in use someday I'd love to have a CD player in here but I don't really know where to fit that so that's a future thing but right now only two are in use maybe the fourth one I could add like an aux cord put it like right there and yeah so that's that's everything in this stereo so um, I have a couple record now the problem with demonstrating music is that uh, there's copyright and I don't know what is copyrighted and not so my best bet is just to do classical unfortunately I would love to show you um, smoking the bandit 2 the um, I do know from the video I did though that Texas bound and flying I believe would I mean listen I don't really care it's not like any of these videos are monetized but just for to show you guys I don't want the video to be silent you know what I mean um, but I do have besides classical I have some three let's zoom out three uh, National Lampoon records just to show you I, we're not gonna be listening to them but just to show the the record changing ability uh, and then I'm just gonna play off of this Beethoven record a little of the old Beethoven what does it say in Clockwork Orange and what I needed now to give it the perfect ending was a bit of the old Ludwig van so what you do well first actually we should turn it on turn on the record or the uh, turn on the player start with this this right here I don't know if you can hear it but there's a beautiful hum when you turn it on it just goes boom and it's just I don't know it's beautiful uh, we're gonna change this to phono and what you do is you put this right here we're gonna release the arm and then this uh, switch that's right here we're just gonna Swing it all the way, and then it drops. And then the needle will go onto the grooves. And then soon enough. This is the official National Lampoon stereo test and demonstration record. It is not a tape. If you are playing it on a cassette tape recorder, a cartridge tape recorder, or a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, take it off immediately and place it on your turntable. For those unfamiliar with modern stereo terminology, a turntable is a mechanical device 
that contains both a rotating disc I'm and a needle. Talking here. Do not confuse it with a sewing machine, which also contains both a rotating disc and a needle, and should be used only in the event the record tears. So we'll put on another National Lampoon record. And then we'll put on a third record. And then we'll finish it off with um, Beethoven. So, release the arm. Rock and roll and the end of the so world! Next, I'm gonna turn it down just so I can explain it. So, the record drops, and you could have like, I don't know how many, I don't know what the limit is, but you could have. You know, I got three right there. And so at the end of the tape, the record's gonna, you know, finish, the needle comes up, it drops, and then it'll change to the next record. It'll drop, needle drops, and then the next record changes. And then you can just keep doing that over and over and over again. So that's, um, like I said, I always knew what it was, but I didn't understand how any of it worked. So this um, this was a new this was a new experience for me. And I, but I, I gotta say, I love it. Um, I don't know. I just think the whole thing is really cool. So let's um, let's put on the Beethoven. <laughs> Did it? Does it really start right there? Here, let's, uh... Next we have the radio, we have mono, if you prefer for some reason, and then you have stereo, and then also AM. The church as its final rule of authority, including on matters of morality. That sucks. You do have uh, stereo though. Again, I don't really want to play it, um, but you can change it from here. Let's try to get to... No more. All right, so that's the radio, nothing special. I will add down here, we have a little headphone port that just comes up, uh, a noise filter, which I haven't really messed with, and then AFC. I have, I don't have it labeled because I thought that would look tacky, so uh, the first one is cassette, and then the second one is um, a track. So there's the first one. So yeah, we'll just pick out I'll just do the 25 all-time classics. Um, uh, eject, and then we'll just put the cassette in, play, and then we'll zoom out here to show you the full thing. So that's cassette, and then we'll move on to the A track. Now, I again, I would love to show you, you know, uh, Fleetwood Mac or you know 
Jimi Hendrix. I even have Back in Black, ACDC Back in Black. I'd even love to show you um, Heavy Metal. But uh, we have two choices. And I think, uh, I think I'm gonna choose, I know what I'm gonna choose. I either have uh, John Denver and the Muppets or <laughs> the Sesame Street Rock and Roll album. Uh, both of these were a gift from Nathaniel, so thank him for the uh, the test audio today. So we're gonna switch to the second. So you just push it on to turn on. Now slowly turn up the volume. And then you just take it out to turn it off. I have all the ones down below. That's probably like 25. And then I, I bought a long time ago, I bought like 36, like, uh, the smaller reels. So I have a good, let's just call it four dozen, four dozen uh, reels, but I only have three officially licensed um, like albums. And one of which is the Buckinghams. I've never listened to the Buckinghams before. Um, so we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. We'll see if, We'll see if uh, Mr. Buckingham, you know, gives me a copyright strike. We have to change it to stereo. And then you press play. That's all of our, our lovely audios. And like I said, eventually I'd love to add CDs. Um, CDs are my least listened to audio format, but I really want to fit it right here. If that doesn't work, I might just put it like mounted on the bottom of the machine. So this is the back. Um, you can see that the FM radio wire was pretty chewed up. I know I could have modified my own. But yeah, then you got the wires for the cassette and the 8-track all right here. And this is where the mess of wires is. Now, this is one thing that I'm really thankful for, of not having my, my tall, like, stereo cabinet anymore. I mean, I still have it. I didn't get rid of it, but I don't have to deal with it anymore. Because, um... The wiring was like it would always get in the way and if I had to fix something I had to pull the whole thing out and there's just like bundles and bundles of wires and I just I hated dealing with it but like here I don't have to deal with speaker wire the speakers is literally just that two little plugs um, the record player is whatever this port is um, and then the only RCA jacks that I have to worry about is the uh, reel to reel, and then my two uh, external like, like auxiliary um, audio devices. Uh, the one thing I will say that gave me a good chuckle is um, let's see, where is it? Oh, right there. See the fuse right there? Um, which, you know what? Props to him, because that, that's good salesmanship. I mean, I was going to buy it anyways, but the fuse that's right there, if it'll focus, uh, was broken and wrapped in tin foil. And that's how he was able to show it to me working because he just, he basically just shorted the two contacts, um, with, with cheap little tin foil and a broken fuse. I thought that was quite funny. Um, but that's a brand new fuse, so there's nothing to worry about. Permanent modification. I hate doing permanent modifications because that means that I can't change it back to the original um, if I ever needed to. Like, for example, 
I like uh, temporary fixes like uh, these RCAs that go to the reel the reel. I have the original cords, like these aren't original, and I have the originals um, available, but they were kind of broken and they also were kind of janky. It was just like stripped wire. Um, I don't know how that was allowed back in the back then, but anyways, um, I uh, I like being able to if I ever to sell this, which I would never. Um, I like being able to switch everything back to the original. If someone didn't want the cassette player, nothing's permanently added. I can just lift everything up, and that's what I uh, that's what was really challenging about this because it's kind of, it's hard to make something fit and not screw it or like mount it into the wall. And the only modification I had to do that was this, which I know I did a, I did a horrible job, uh, but it's in the back, so I don't really care. And um, that's just to make it a little more neat uh, with the cord sticking out. Um, so that's the only modification. Nothing in here is mounted. It, um, we have a little three outlet. This is what plugs into the wall. You have the main stereo right there, and that plugs into there, and then you have your 8-track, and you have your cassette plugged into here, and then that's what is um, plugged into the wall. So here's, this is the, um, this is the cassette player, and this is just, you know, a free floating piece of wood, and I would take it out, but everything is very neatly in place, and I don't you know, I'm not, I don't want to do that, but I do have pictures and I'll have to dig them up. And then the eight track, uh, is just one huge harness. And basically it's a plank of wood and that bolt that's connect, that's permanently attached to the eight track player is in that hole. It's just sitting there. It's just sitting in the hole. And then the, um, the AV switcher is just glued onto that whole wood harness. All this this whole square right here is just all glued together. I just felt like talking about it. It's a it's a it's a cool thing that I am proud to own, and I'm happy that with all the stuff that I've done to it. So if you're listening to a record, you can have it shut so the cats won't get to it. The you can put laundry on top of it. That's usually what this is. Is, a, is just the, the laundry shelf. Um, you can even you know decorate it. Like a, I don't know. Like just put like a flower or some shit. I don't know. Just put that there. I don't know. It's it's a piece of furniture. It's not just a music holding, you know, cabinet. It's it just looks nice, and uh, that's the main reason I, I I like it so much. And I'm really happy. The green looks great. The the dark oak or um, looks fantastic on it. And I hope everyone enjoyed. So see you.